too? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, these guys were all um, made from a mold. I made uh, an original one, which looked well, like this. Uh, the legs were separate, so I made a two-part mold, pressed clay into them, and then um, stuck them together. But you'll notice that they aren't all the same. So once I made the kind of original, got the shape, then I would cut them apart and would change the position. So like that one's looking this way or that way, because they're all the same to be kind of boring. So you use press? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so there's press clay on the mold, yeah. stuck them together. So that's these guys. And then these guys are all sort of kind of rock ledges. Because otherwise, they wouldn't have anything to sit on. Right. Yeah. That's what makes the wool so cool. Yeah. yeah, and then I think originally, I, I still have some more of these, but I sold several of them. But there was um, probably about 30 of them to begin with. It was a really kind of immersive experience to see them all. But, I, I guess I could make more, but I uh, spent a lot of time making those guys. So. Are they underglaze? I know, all glaze. Like all regular yeah. Awkward question. Have they named? Have you named any of these? These guys, no. Okay. <laughs> I think they have, they do have numbers on them, okay. so I keep track of which one goes where. But uh, these guys do not have names. Okay. Usually reserve it for the larger ones. Yeah. Questions? Other questions about these guys? Yes. Um, I had a question about the texture that you have on the rocks. Did you do that with the clay or the special glaze or something? That is. I, a bit of an accident, but I layered up a bunch of different glazes and then that's what I got. And, and it bubbled up so then I went in with a, like a wire wheel on a grinder just to take off because they would, some of you see the bubbles, but they were really fragile so I just kind of took that off. And so that was a little bit of a happenstance. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to get when I did those, but I had a rough idea. Just that was great. And yeah, you talk about, about yes. real quick? Yeah. Okay, so these are brand new, 2017. And because I talked about how I will also do like the works on paper that isn't just because like that's a lot faster and otherwise I'm stuck with 700 giant sculptures and my wife would not be pretty happy with me. If I had 700. We all have storage units. <laughs> yes, yeah, I've got to take some stuff there this week. But, uh, so these are works on paper, and then I wanted to do something kind of new for here too. And I started thinking of like, what can I do all of it? So these are all blackbirds found in North America. Um, there is a yellow-headed blackbird, the tricolored blackbird, which looks really similar to the red-winged blackbird. This guy lives, uh, its numbers are way down, but lives kind of uh, in the uh, in the kind of Pacific Northwest, like the Central Valley of California. Uh, yeah, kind of the Central Valley of California into Mexico, maybe a little bit of Oregon. Uh, Red winged blackbird. The uh, Brewer's blackbird, which is found mostly out west. And then the Rusty blackbird, which lives kind of in like southern Canada, Michigan, and then will kind of migrate down here sometimes a little bit. Their numbers are usually much more uh, common than they are now. And it was, no, one quite, no one's quite sure what happened to those guys. But you can find them at, uh, down by the airport at the Tinicum, or Heinz uh, Wildlife Refuge up in the trees there in the winter. And then, yeah, and then this was something that was a small enough group that I was like, I can get all the blackbirds done, whether they're doing like, all the sparrows or all the warblers, which are like 50 birds or something. So it's kind of what those guys are. How many birds would you say there actually is? Do they say there are the number of birds out there, or is and that just something worldwide different? Worldwide, or is that just something different from what you're doing? You, you mean you know, I think worldwide it's in like ten thousand species. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then what's considered a species will change a little bit too. That like there'll be new information, like DNA, and we're like oh these two are actually different, or. Sometimes things are thought to be separate and they're grouped together. But so in North America, I think there's about 700 plus regularly occurring birds. You better get busy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I've got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Uh, okay. um, I want to know like what came first. Was it like your interest in birds or art or did they inspire each other? Oh, um, good question. I would say my interest in birds came first. Okay. And then a lot of times I was, because I do a few other series of work as well, but I guess this was what I applied here with. And uh, it was something I kind of just, Sorry. one day I was like, oh, I want to make this like Roadrunner and uh, that but I like that, I kind of start making more of these guys. So then this is kind of taken on a life of it. So so I've got like maybe two or three different bodies of work that I kind of will simultaneously do, which is kind of fun. So uh, you can find different markets for different things. And sometimes, you know, it gets boring doing the same thing over and over. Thank you very much. All right, thank you guys.